The woman in this photo was already deceased for two weeks when it was taken. On February 1st, 2012, 18-year-old Samantha Koenig was working alone as a barista at a roadside coffee kiosk in Anchorage, Alaska. When right before close, a man approaches the window of the kiosk, initially with plans to rob it, but when he sees Samantha, his plans take a horrific turn. As Samantha's making this man a cup of coffee, she turns around and she is stunned when she sees that he's pointing a weapon directly at her and he instructs her to turn off the lights and to get down on the ground. He then leans in through the window and restrains her hands behind her back with zip ties before he proceeds to jump inside of the kiosk himself. And what makes this even more disturbing is this entire encounter is caught on security footage. Samantha is then brought back to this home where she's locked in this shed. And from there, the man goes inside the house to check on his sleeping girlfriend and his 10 year old daughter to make sure they're both asleep. And once he sees the girls are sleeping, this man pours himself a glass of wine before he goes back out to the shed where Samantha's locked in. And up until this point, he has told Samantha, I'm not going to hurt you, this is just for ransom, cooperate and you'll be fine. But when he walks through the doors of that shed, he tells Samantha that I am going to brutally assault you before I take your life. And he proceeds to do that, and then only hours later, he leaves his home with his girlfriend and his 10 year old daughter to go on a two week cruise leaving Samantha's body in the shed. Meanwhile, Samantha's family is absolutely devastated, understandably, looking and searching for their daughter. Well, this killer is off on a cruise, and when the cruise is over, the killer comes home, and he finds that Samantha's body is completely frozen solid because of the freezing temperatures in Alaska. This is when he proceeds to apply makeup to her face and sew her eyelids open with fishing line, just so he could take a photo of her next to a recent newspaper to make it look like she's still alive. Only so, he can then request a ransom from the victim's family. When news of this photo breaks, Samantha's family is completely elated because they think that their daughter, who's been missing for two weeks, is actually still alive, so they quickly wire the money that was requested to Samantha's bank account, since the abductor had her wallet and ATM card. Although, shortly after this photo was taken, Samantha's body was dismembered and thrown into a lake. And even though police had the security footage of the night that Samantha was taken, they did not have any other real leads or clues until March of 2012, when the killer begins to withdraw the ransom money. During all the ATM withdrawals, Keys covers his face each time, but one of the times, as he's pulling out past the ATM, the camera picks up on the car that he's driving. So police now know they are looking for a white Ford Focus. On March 13, 2012, that same car was spotted in a hotel parking lot. Police tail that car, where they witness the car speeding, which then gives them an excuse to pull it over and search the car. And while searching the car, police find Samantha's ATM card, but also the mask that the killer was wearing each time he was in front of the camera at the ATM. Given the circumstances, police make an arrest right there. And days later, he would admit to not only taking the life of Samantha, but also several other victims. And police at this point now know that they have a serial killer on their hands and they had no idea. But before even going to trial, this coward would take his own life in prison. And as he sits in his prison cell bleeding, he begins to use his blood to draw 11 skulls, a pentagram, and a message that says, we are one, before passing. Leading officials to believe that he had 10 other victims, and at this point, three of those victims have actually been identified, but the remaining eight have not. It is absolutely terrifying to think that there are serial killers who are active today, and they just fly under the radar for so long. In 2012, I didn't hear about this crime. Is this something that you've heard about before? This is just a horrific case. I mean, a woman should be able to go to work and not worry about being taken. 